uh, this past uh, Saturday, which was yesterday, uh, you know, yeah, Jacob mentioned uh, a lot of us went uh, rafting. Wow. Yeah, we did. And so that was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, we should definitely post some of the photos in the group chat. But uh, it was cool because uh, there was a little segment of the whitewater uh, ra uh, you know, part as we were going through the rapids. Uh, there was a level four rapid called, um, I believe it was called the Troublemaker. Thank you. And, uh, the only time during the whole uh, rafting trip that there was a photographer and you just had somebody taking photos of basically the most intense part of the rafting trip and so you're just going through the rapids you know uh, it's cool just seeing everyone's faces uh you know some people are like just like laughing i think ryan was like you know as he's going through like the, the water she's just smiling like I think Emily was doing the same thing. Um, you met uh, Kang and uh, Jeremiah. They were just going through it. You're just like, oh, oh, oh. you know, you just see their faces. Nice. Um, I was next to Abigail. My face, I, I was like, yeah, I thought it was like a little more like happy, but my face was just like, just like super like serious. And then, and then Abigail, uh, she was like spitting out water. She like, oh, dang. I'm like, dang. And, uh, water just went right in her face. And then uh, I think uh, what I love uh, the most about all the boats, uh, it was cool is looking at Jacob's boat. Uh, because, uh, you know, there they have uh, Jacob, you have Ray, you have Cindy, uh, some others, and uh, man, they're, they're going through it. You know, the rapids, the water, it's, it's like they're in the deep end of it. And so they're just going through it like, right? And then you see Jezzy behind Jacob. She, she sees the photographer. And so the whole time, it's like, uh, like uh, you know, uh, school photos. And so she's just like... <laughs> the entire time, as you're going through the rapids, for like 40 photos in, it's the same photo. Like literally every angle. She's just, she's just smiling the whole time. Uh, but she was like, focused on it. But, uh, you know, uh, thank God, uh, we all made it out alive. We all made it down the down to get to the river to make it to the end zone, you know, it's very symbolic of the Christian walk that we get to live out in our walk as well. You know, very symbolic throughout the Bible, you know, you get Noah and the ark that they had to get in the boats so that they could be saved from the water in the same way for us, you know, going through the saving waters of baptism, making it on the other side so that we could be with God. And so the same way as we got the boat down the water to the other end, we as well are going to get into our spiritual boat, the ark, God's church, so that we can make it to the very end. You know, turn around your Bible to you first. Corinthians chapter 3. And uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, we're going to be talking about getting in the boats and building a solid foundation here. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, you know, the Bible talks about it actually. In 1 Corinthians 3, in verse 10, this is what the Bible here reads. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 10. The Bible says, By the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as an expert builder. And someone else is building on it. But each one should be careful how he builds, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Christ Jesus. If any man builds on this foundation using gold, silver, cost of stone, wood, hay, or straw, his work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it into light. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each man's work. If what he has built survives, he will receive a reward. If it is burned up, he will suffer loss. He will himself be saved, but only as one escaping through the flames. Come on, bro. What a passage, right? And uh, you know, I love Paul here because he's saying, hey, I lay a foundation as an expert builder. Right. And he's like, what's the building? The building is you. We are God's, God's building. We are. Our faith is what we are building up in this life. That's right. And it says, hey, we are going to build with some costly stones. Right. We're not going to build this house with hay. We're not going to build this house with just something that will fall apart in like a month, yeah. fall apart yeah. in a year, oh, fall apart God. in a short time. No, we're going to build with some costly stones because, hey, this boat, this building is making it to the very end. Are you guys with me right here? Oh, no. You know, uh, I love this passage because Paul is saying... I am an expert builder. Nice. And so, the, you know, as much as, you know, we have an incredible faith in our great God. 
God is going to get us through everything in our life. Without God, we can't do anything. God allows us to do things. But uh, we are, um, we, we need to work with God as he works with us. You know, if you study out the Bible, you know, God uses man to do his will. God is very dependent upon man to do his will. You know, the, the Bible talks about Matthew 28, go make disciples of all nations. Right. Baptize them, teach them to obey. So God's tool for salvation for all mankind is to get men, to get women, to implement the word of God in their lives and for them to go out into all the world and spread it to all over the world. God is dependent upon mankind so that his word can spread all over the world. And that's what God uses. He uses us. So that means that we need to do our part in building this temple, building this building, so that we can make it to the end. You know, it says it will be tested. And so uh, I know, I'm sure you're with me right here, that man, man, when when my building gets uh, gets tested... Man, I want to be before God like, hey, I built this thing with some costly stone. Come on, bro. Yeah. This thing is making it to the very end. Uh, and I'm not going to be that guy like, I'm barely making it in. You know, like, just like my whole backside is burnt. But like, my friend like just barely made it. I know I'm going to go in. I'm like, hey, I did whatever I could because I know I want to make it to the very end. And I know that's all of us here this morning as well. Are you guys with me right here? Yeah. Yeah. And so this morning, I want to talk about building with costly Stones. Nice. And so my first point is costly stone of character. Wow. You know, turn me your Bibles to Romans chapter 5. Come on, Vic. Let's go, Victor. Come on, Romans 5. Bro. God wants us to build a costly stone of character. Nice. You know, in Romans chapter 5, this is what the Bible reads here. In Romans 5, verse 3. Preach, bro. The Bible says, not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings. Because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. Nice. And the hope that does not disappoint us. Because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom he has given us. Right. Yeah. You know, I love this passage because God is saying that, man, one thing leads into the next. Yeah. You know, it says we rejoice in our sufferings. Because once we get through that, once we could get the suffering in life, the Bible says you're not going to suffer. It says you are going to suffer. And then it tells you to rejoice through those sufferings. And so once you learn to rejoice through the sufferings, then you start building some character. Um, Then the Bible says after you built that character, now you can start building some hope. Okay. At the end of the road, at the end of our lives, what are we hoping for? Man, I'm going to be with God in heaven. Come on, bro. This life that we're living, it's just a temporary time period. Right. We're not going to be here for a very, very much time. You know, a hundred years compared to an eternity is not a lot of time. Right. And so, hey, the hope we're hoping for is to be with God in heaven. But the only way we're going to get there is if we build that character and we build that perseverance. You know, uh, character in the Greek, the word is dokime. Nice. Um, it's actually really cool because uh, Tim Kernan writes a book about dokime, which is really yeah. cool. I encourage you to read it. It's really good. Uh, but dokime in the Greek, it literally translates to tried character. Wow. Where you have been put through the fire and you've been proven faithful. Nice. Wow. The Bible says this is what leads into hope. Wow. So the only way that we we're going to get into that hope yeah. to be with God at the end of the day is if we have some tried character that's going to get us through all the suffering and trials in our lives. Come on, bro. Right. That we have the great response. We're going to rejoice through the suffering and we're going to build that character to get us on through. Come on. You know, so now you may be wondering, it's like, okay, well, what exactly is character? You know, it's pretty cool, actually. You know, we hear it all the time. Yeah. You know, you hear all the different forms of character. Um, you know, you hear it um, in terms of, like, uh, integrity. Yeah. You hear it in terms of, like, honesty. You hear it in terms of compassion, peace. All these incredible things. All these things are character. Now, the only thing is we just got to inherit these characteristic traits here. Mm. Let me help you guys out on a few lists here, okay? Go to Galatians chapter 5. Oh. Bro. Oh. In Galatians 5, here's a list of some oh. character. Oh. In Galatians 5, we won't go to verse 19. That's what it's about. Crazy. That's what you can cross the knee. Uh, but Galatians 5, 22. This is a list of the fruits of the Spirit. Preach, bro. In Galatians 5, verse 22. This is what the Bible reads. It says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, 
patience, kindness, okay. goodness, wow. faithfulness, wow. gentleness, and self-control. Wow. I'll stop there. You know, these are an incredible list of, of, uh, of you know words here. And uh, you know, to be to be quite honest with you guys, uh, I feel like I've been reading this passage for years, and I and I kind of will like skim past it. You know, I'm like, oh, fruits of the spirit. Okay, you gotta be loving. Awesome, cool, loving. Got to be joyful. All right. Let's get, up, let's get happy over here, you know? Like, okay. Uh, self-control. Okay. You know, got to start you know, putting yourself together here, right? I'm like, okay. Pretty straightforward. But I got an opportunity to really just drill down and study these words out. And so, you know, it says love. And so it says the fruit of the Spirit. So basically the Bible is saying these are the fruits that are to be displaying in your life. Nice. This is what God wants you to be displaying wherever you go. Come on, bro. The first one he says is love. Oh. You know, in the Greek, it is the agape love. Whoa. And so this is the sacrificial love yeah. that God wants us to display. Uh, the sacrificial love that Jesus died on the cross for us. You know, that you, you love without anything in return. Wow. You know, it's a feeling, not an, uh, uh, excuse me, it's not a feeling, oh, it's an you. action. Come on, uh, doing yeah. things for others without expecting anything in return. This is that agape love. And God says this is a fruit that we should be displaying in our lives, the agape love. You know, he goes on, he says joy. I'm like, joy, I'm like, all right, pretty straightforward. But diving in a little deeper, the Greek word is chara. And this goes into a lasting emotion that comes from the choice to trust that God's will will be will, will be fulfilled. Uh, his promises will be fulfilled. Come on, Excuse me. Uh, let me say that one more time. A lasting emotion that comes from the choice to trust that God's will will be fulfilled. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. This is joy. That we make a decision, man. I, I know God is going to be faithful to the very end. I know God's promises are going to be very true, and I'm going to believe that wholeheartedly in my mind every single day. Are you with me right here? Come on, bro. You know, what's this next one? Peace. It's uh, an ending, which translates to taking what is broken and restoring it to wholeness. This is peace. You know, it's cool because the Bible says Jesus brought peace into the world. He came in and took what was broken and gave it wholeness of life. Wow. And this is what God has done for us. And he says this is what we want to be displaying in our life. We take the broken parts in our life and we get, we get to receive that wholeness and have that peace. You know, it says patience. The other word that this translates to is long-suffering. Yes. And so God is never, God never has said this is going to be an easy road. Oh, uh, right. And actually, he's just saying, hey, be joyful through your suffering. Right. So you'll thank me later. Amen. Right? Oh. He's like, oh, thanks, God. Right? But he's saying patience is long suffering. That you just have a mentality. I won't quit. Come on. Wait with me right here. Okay. You know, and it goes on and on, man. You could go into hard work. You know, a great deal of endurance and effort, integrity, you know, doing things behind, you know, closed doors, whether people are watching or not. And I'm going to have integrity about it. Yeah. Right. You know, self-control. Mm. You know, uh, I want to talk about prudence for a second. Oh, all right. You know, uh, the Bible and Proverbs talks a lot about prudence, yep. yeah. where prudence, uh, if you don't know, prudence is literally the definition. Uh, this is what it says. It says, the act of showing care and thought for the future. Nice. Oh. Where at this present time. You can start planning, you can start thinking about your future and what's to come. And if this is foreign to you, I want to help you out here, amen? Uh, you know, we do have a young church, uh, and I believe there is a lot of character traits that we could get down and drill in our character so that we can gain these traits so that we can build a solid foundation with some costumes you know, here. You know, prudence, uh, literally planning for the future. You know, uh, I hope you have a budget. You know, if you don't have a plan on how you're going to get through your finances, uh, you're going to have a hard time, you know, struggling with your, whether it be paying your bills, paying rent, whatever it is. It's being prudent about the future. You know, right now, just thinking like, okay, next month, a couple months out, what does my finances look like? Will I be able to sustain my what uh, I'm, you know, how much I'm, my expenses are and how much I'm taking in. Come on, because bro. no, I need to be prudent and act now and I need to get a job. Nice. Or if my job isn't paying my bills, I don't got a job and I got to go get one. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. yeah. This is being prudent in our faith. You know, the other thing too is like, man, if there is a cycle of sin that you are in, well, you got to be prudent. Like, okay, what did I do last time? Well, mm. I was in that same situation. Mm. 
-hmm. in that same spot, yep. and I did it there at that time and in that location. Mm. Wow. Mm. And that happens again? And then the next month it happened again? Yeah. And then the next month it happened again? Like, okay, I think I need to draw some like, some lines here. I can't be in that situation. Right. I'm yeah. going to be prudent right here. You guys Come on, girl. Yeah. You know, the other thing I believe we need to grow in is our ambition. Oh. You know, ambition where it's a strong desire to do or to achieve something typically requiring determination or hard work. Woo. You know, yeah. just a mentality where you're just like, hey, I want to go and do that. Come on, bro. Give it to me. I'm going to run. I'm going to grab it through the glory of God and what the ability he's given me. I'm going to get it done. Come on, yeah. Come on, That's bro. the mentality I believe we need to inherit in our church. Amen? Come on, bro. Amen bro. We have an ambition. You know, it's really cool. Uh, we had a cyber ministry meeting last night. Yeah, we did. And uh, Ethan and Michelle are doing an incredible job, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, they're doing so much. Like, we want to do so many things. You're like, man, let's go start a podcast. Like, dude, that's, that's awesome. Hey, uh, let's go have some reels for church and for the campus ministry. I'm like, dude, that's incredible. You know, hey, let's go do some uh, life in the, in the life of a disciple throughout the week. I'm like, man, that is incredible. Like, absolutely. Let's do it. But then I asked, I'm like, okay, hey, I'm all for it, guys. But my question is, who's just going to do it? Right. <laughs> who's going to go out? Like, who's going to do that stuff? Because I'll tell you what, like, hey, I'm kind of teed out on what I can't do. And so I'm like, hey, who's going to take it? That's the only question I have. And that's the question I had for the side ministry. But I believe God wants us to inherit these traits that we can be those people. Come on, bro. You know, the last one I just want to go through, or two more, actually. Uh, one is sincerity. You know, sincerity, um, you know, we kind of, we talk a lot against it because, you know, the religious world is very sincere in their faith where it's like a false sincerity. Yeah. Right. Where, like, hey, because I believe, um, I'm good, right. even though what I'm doing in my life doesn't respond to it. Yeah. Uh, but sincerity is a great characteristic trait that I believe we need to in inherit in our lives. Right. You know, sincerity, the definition is freedom from deceit. Whoa. Uh, freedom from hypocrisy. Mm. Uh, freedom from duplicity, honesty, and intent or in communication. Yeah. Yeah. Where, man, you just communicate straightforwardly. Yeah. Hey, I got nothing to hide. I said everything. Everything's on, out of life. You know, yeah. I think sometimes you can kind of get into the mode where it's like, hey, I didn't lie. Oh. But I didn't, I didn't tell the, like, the complete truth. Mm. Right. I just shared just, just enough. Oh. Uh, well, you start oh, skating through the lines of being deceitful. Right. Yeah. Where it's like, hey, I didn't, I, deceitful, the definition is hiding the truth. Uh -huh. Or, you know, you're, it's like, boy, you're not saying the complete story. Yeah. And so yeah. sincerity is, man, I got freedom from it. I got nothing to hide. Everything's out in the open. Just like yeah. Bianca shared for yeah. our communion. Yeah. Yeah. That's the same heart that we need to have as well. You know, the last one I want to talk about is confidence. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, confidence. Uh, this one is a challenge for me, and I'll share in a second. Uh, but confidence, it's a firm trust. Feeling certain, feeling sure of yourself and your abilities because Whoa. God is with you. Oh, nice. You know, this is the confidence that God wants us to inherit in our lives. Right. Yep. This is the characteristic trait. You know, there's so, so many more, but I believe these are the costly stones. These are the characters that will get us to that hope Come on, so that we can make it and be there before God to the very end. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, it was really cool in the rafting trip. Um, you know, so we, we get in our boat. We finally get through the whole process and whatnot. And so we sit on a boat. I believe in my boat, it was me, it was Abigail, it was Lindsay, it's Tyla, it's Angel, and then our guy. And uh, it, was, uh, it was funny because uh, we got in our boat, and so we, we get into the water, and our guide is like going through the, all the protocols with us, right? He's like, oh, guys, if I, if I say forward, we all go forward, all right? All right, left, and then right, and then back. Like, all right, everybody got it? Like, yeah, we got it. And then he's like, oh, my gosh, you guys are like the dream team here. You guys are incredible. I'm like, yeah, let's go. You know, I did like the power high fives. Like, yeah, great job, guys. And so we go through our first rapid. I think it's like a, like yeah, we'll a have level it. one. What happened? And we go through it, and it's it's like a small little rapid. Uh, but the first thing uh, we do, or Abigail does, she Abigail just starts screaming. Like, oh, Abby, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. 
<laughs> and, uh, and then she's like, okay, guys, whoa, 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 what just happened? We were so confident right there, and then we just went through it, and now, like, everything just went out the door. Dang it, Abby. Okay, okay, guys. Oh, okay, down to talk to No swimming in this boat, okay? You need to hear my direction. Oh, no. Oh, dang, okay. You know, it's funny because, uh, you know, in a real way, I feel like that could be a lot of us in our faith. Yeah. <laughs> So confident, okay. like, man. Dream team over here, guys. Oh, yeah. We're gonna get through this. Yeah, job, career, school, I could take it all. I got it. Yeah. No, I could get through that. And then you go through and you're like, ah, oh. 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 You're like oh. Oh. Now you're like picking up the pieces, trying to get it together again, right? Um, we can be the same way in our faith. But what we need to get us through is that character. Come on, bro. You know, uh, Tim Curtis stated in his book, he said, skill will take you far, but only character will keep you there. Whoa. You know, and, and just to share, just briefly for me, like, uh, right now I'm 27. Uh, I came into the kingdom when I was 18 years old. I got baptized October 5th in 2014. And so it's been some years now, and uh, God has, has been going to town on me. Come on, bro. Uh, you can ask Jacob. He'll, he'll tell you all the stories. Uh, yeah, Isaac, he'll give you half the story. Um, he's only known me for half as long. So, um, but actually, Brooke was there, so you can ask Brooke. Let's go, Brooke. Um, but uh, you know, to the point, I was baptized, and I was 18 years old. I needed a lot of the character. You know, we always say like. And when you come out of the world, like, basically, we're coming out of slavery. Yeah. Like, we're literally leaving, like, a world that's, like, false. Yeah. That tells you all these promises that will leave you dry and empty. And so we're literally leaving it, like, scarred and bruised and broken. And now we come into the kingdom, and we're trying to, like, live life with all these this bags we're carrying in. And we're just trying to get through it. Yeah. Trying to be godly about everything yeah. in our lives now. Yeah. You know, so for me, like, I mean, I practically live my life in front of a TV screen. Um, I mean, just playing video games time and time again, that was my life. You know, um, you know, you always hear the classic story of the person who, you know, wants to escape their hardship, wants to escape their pain. And so what do they go to? They go to drugs, go to alcohol. Right. Uh, well, well, other forms that could not be seen as the same uh, sins right. is, yeah, video games, debauchery, yeah. Uh, overindulgence mm. in TV shows, uh, impurity. Uh, money, all these things are other yeah. vices that will lead us astray yeah. from God. Yeah. And so now coming in the kingdom, God wants us to sit in our affliction, learn the lesson that we've never learned before because we've just checked out when things got hard. Mm -hmm. And so now we get to build that Ooh. character, we get to build that perseverance, yeah. that harbor, on, that ambition, that confidence, that we can build that hope to make it to the very end. And that's all of us here this morning. You with me? point here is um, what character trait do you need to build in your life? Whoa. You know, what is the area for you you're like, dang, uh, that's the one I gotta go after. Come on, bro. And here's the thing, you know, I mentioned, right, we're co-workers with Christ, right. and so as much as we can have the mentality like, God, you're gonna get me through. That's true. But if you don't do something, yeah. right. nothing's going to happen. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Nothing's going to happen. On, That's why Paul is saying, I'm an expert builder. Yeah. I am building what costs these stones. Yeah. So it is a decision that we get to make on what kind of stones on, we want to build our house with. And I know everybody in this church wants to build with some costly stones. Oh, yeah. Because we are making it to the very end. You guys yeah. Yeah. Come on, yeah. make it. You know, my second point is the costly stone of preaching. Mom, you know, go back with me and in in your Bible to 1 Corinthians 3. Preach the word, bro. In 1 Corinthians 3, the costly stone of preaching. Come on. Let's go, dream team. This is awesome. Uh, in 1 Corinthians 3, uh, in verse 5, just a little earlier from what we are reading, uh, 1 Corinthians 3, verse 5, the Bible reads, What after all is Apollos? What is Paul? Only servants through whom you came to believe, as the Lord has assigned to each his task. I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God made it grow. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. The man who plants and the one who, um, the one who waters have one purpose, and each one will be rewarded according to his own labor. For we are God's fellow workers, you are God's field, God's building. You know, this is an incredible passage right here. And so, um, kind of going a little further right here, you know, 
the Bible here is saying that we are co-workers with Christ. Right. So God is in control of the whole, the whole nine, the whole world, everything going on. But God limits himself to you and to me. Right. Yeah. His plan is us to bring salvation into the world. And so the Bible says, hey, Paul is like, hey, I planted the seed. Apollos is like, hey, I watered that seed. Right. And God is saying, I made that mm. grow. Mm. Why, bro? So what does that mean? God can't make these seeds grow if there are no seeds. Yeah. Oh. God can make it uh, grow if somebody's not watering it. Why, bro? You know, if somebody's not sharing their faith or following up or inviting them out to things or going that extra mile yeah. to love upon somebody who's coming into their faith. Yeah. So that means in order for God to work, we have to plant those seeds and we have to water those Come seeds. On, there is a symbiotic relationship between God mm. and man. On, he limits bro. himself to us so that we can bring the plan of salvation to the world. So yeah. You know, us sharing our faith, not only is it bring salvation to the world, but it also is keeping the saved safe. Right. Yeah. Come on. You know, uh, in 1 Corinthians 9, 27, the Bible says, you know, Paul is saying, after I have preached to others, I myself would not be disqualified for the mm, prize. Nice. Yeah. You know, and so if we're not out there sharing, if we're not out there growing God's kingdom, saving souls, if we're not out there being outwardly focused, uh, what are we going to be doing? We're going to be inwardly focused right. on ourselves. Yep. On, uh, and that's where you get into the sin, and then you get into the cycle, and Man. that's where God's like, all right, no, we got to go preach the word of God. Right. You know, this also is true because Romans 10 verse 14 says, how then can they call on the one they have not believed in? How can they believe in the one they have not heard? And how can they hear without somebody preaching to them? Yeah. We need to preach the word so that people could come up faith. You know, uh, the Bible talks about it here in Matthew 9 as well. You can turn there. Come on, bro. Uh, Here's the word, bro. In Matthew 9, uh, the Bible talks about it here. Praise, bro. In Matthew 9, verse 35, is what the Bible says. Matthew 9, 35. The title is, The Workers Are Few. And it says, Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, Preaching the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless. Like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Mm. You know, I love this passage. I love Jesus. You know, Jesus is an incredible example. You know, talk about some characters or traits that we were just talking about. Literally, as Jesus was preaching the word, he was healing people, casting out demons. So talk about that agape love. Yep. And then it says he had compassion. So he had that compassion on there. He had compassion with those who were hurting. And he looked at people and was like, oh my gosh, they're a sheep without a shepherd. They don't know what they're doing. Right. And was that not all of us? Oh, yeah. You know, uh, I, I super appreciate sure. Bianca sharing. But honestly, that's all of our stories. Yeah. Yeah. We all came out of that. Yeah. And so all of us can now have sympathy and compassion yeah. on others. Because that was once us. Yeah. And see, Jesus said he had compassion. And what was his response? He says, the harvest is plentiful. The workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest. Send out workers into the fields. The very next verse, he's like, all right, guys, so go. <laughs> like, dang, all right. It's the fastest answered prayer in all the Bible. Whoa. He prays, God, send out workers into the fields. Like, all right, guys, so uh, all right, you guys go. It's like, okay, all right, it's us. We're the ones to go. Absolutely. <laughs> God wants to use us to go into the field yep. to go and reap that harvest. Yep. You know, this passage is always true. The harvest is always plentiful. It's just the workers are few. Right. You know, and I believe right now in the church, you know, it is summertime. Right. And so things have gotten slower down. You know, I feel like everyone's out and doing like summer break. You know, we're all going rafting, <laughs> all doing different oh, yeah. trips and having Woo! fun, which is awesome. Yeah. Uh, but as well, things have slowed down in ministry and those who are being saved. You know, yeah, it definitely has been some time of more people studying, more people getting baptized. And what is the only answer for that? There's not a lot of workers. Yeah. Is it? You know, the Bible, uh, it, it's math. You know, where one plus one is always two. As much as the harvest is plentiful, the workers are few. Yep. And so whenever there's a lack of fruit in the church, it's simply just not a lot of people Come on, are bro. sharing. Come on, bro. You know, it's, uh, it's pretty cool to think about it. You know, if you kind of put your mind in this. If you go out and share an hour a day, every day, 
don't you think you'd be fruitful? Yeah. 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 You'd be fruitful. Yeah. Because yeah. God's going to work through your heart and your efforts and bear some fruit. Right. You know, and I have an incredible example that you can implement that in. Uh, next week, we're going to be going to McKinley Park, sharing our faith there. And then we're going to bear some fruit for the Lord. Yeah. Everyone who comes out to that, we are going to bear some fruit. Lord. Amen. You know, and it's just math. We're going to bear fruit. You know, talking about the rafting trip again, I have to go back there. Um, you know, it took a lot of preparation to get that done. Um, you know, so we, we get into this uh, bus. He takes us all the way down the American River because we're going to go to the end, uh, the beginning spot, which will lead us to. Uh, the end, the end was the beginning that we parked our cars in, if that makes sense. So we parked our cars, we get in a bus, we go down the river, and we get to the spot, we go down this hill, and man, they got everything on, like, lockdown. We go down this hill, they're like, alright, here's your wetsuit. Dang, okay, put it on. Alright, cool. Get this whole thing on. Uh, it's like, you feel like you're, like, an astronaut, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah, great. Uh, and then they're like, okay, here's your windbreaker. I'm like, okay, I need a windbreaker? Like, yeah, it's going to be windy. I'm like, okay. Oh, hey, all right, you put a, a windbreaker on. It's like, all right, here's your helmet. I'm like, okay, I need a helmet. Here's your paddle. I'm like, okay, thanks for my paddle. I'm like, all right. Uh, and they're like, all right, here are the safety protocols. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, we go through it. Then we get in the boat with our, now we have a guide in our boat. Now, not only that, now we have a guide. Yeah. And they're like, oh, hey, let me go through it again. And so, boom, 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 we'll go through the whole thing. Hey, what happens if you fall out? What happens if the boat flips? You know, all this stuff, right? And so they're going through the extent miles to make sure, hey, they're going to make sure that boat is going to get to the end of that river yeah. and we're all going to make it out alive. Right. That's what they made sure. Right. And then, of course, you know, they had to send a waiver. Hey, you can't do this. <laughs> Things don't turn out okay. Sorry. Uh, you know what you're doing, right? right? And so they made sure to go through great lengths to make sure, hey, that boat is going to be successful and it's going to make it to the end. Yeah. And so in the same way for us, if they're going to make sure that boat is successful and going through all the stops, making sure it goes down, well, what's the boat? It's the ark. Oh, you know, what do we yeah. need to do as well? The question is, at what lengths are we going to go through to make sure that boat is built? Uh, those those uh, ripping rapids are not going to break down our boat. We're going to have an incredible building, and it's going to make it to the end of that river and to the kingdom of God and be with God in heaven Come one on, day. Bro. And that's what we are building here this morning. Come on, bro. And so, if these are the extents they go through to build a boat to make it to the end, what will we do to help souls be saved? Yeah. Wow. You know, all the work we're going to do to reach out to somebody, invite them out of the church. You know, bring them to a Bible study. You know, invite them to an event. Have some dinner over my home. Let's pray together. Let's read our Bibles together. These are the extents it's going to need so that we can get somebody into the saving waters of baptism right here. You know, my only challenge is if every Bible talk in the church was fruitful every month. Think about that. Every Bible talk in the church, fruitful every month. Say, wow, one Bible talk, fruitful every month. Totally is doable. If you think about it, there's four Bible talks in the church. Four Bible talks, baptism, you know, baptisms once a month. That is weekly baptisms in the church. Weekly souls being saved in God's kingdom. It can absolutely be done here. You know, and saying this out, this means that, man, we can go out. We can go and plant those seeds. We can water it, and God will make it grow. The only thing God wants us to do is to go out and be those workers. Come on, bro. You know, so setting this out, we know what it means to be an expert builder. We have the characters and traits. We now want to know what it means to preach the word. And why will we preach it? Because we want to be in tune with our faith. We want to make sure that we won't be disqualified at the end of the day, but also... Man, we were once there who weren't saved. Yeah. And so we're going to extend the hand yeah. and invite the next person out. Yeah. Because being in the kingdom of God is the best thing Come everyone on, can Reed. do in their life. Come on, bro. Saved and being out of the world of slavery and in God's Come kingdom on, bro. in the ark of God. Yeah. Yeah. So my two points. My two points I have. Let's build with costly stones because we're going to make it to the very end. We're going to build this building. And it's going to be a skyscraper that's leaning into heaven that we're going to be with God. Yes. You know, the last thing I just want to say as we wrap up here is that uh, Abigail and I are implementing this passage yes. because this next year we're going to be fruitful because we have a baby on the way. Yeah.
said, okay. <laughs> Uh, we'll have the talent, we'll have the skill, yeah. we'll have the training so that we can go out and save other people. Let's be those expert builders and build and possibly build.